just going to take you through how to do your folio. This is the design for living folio for um, year seven. And it's going to um, consist of a few different parts. What I'm planning on doing is taking you through um, the checklist that I've handed each student. And if you haven't uh, got yours still, you'll find it on the Google site, the Newman Google site. Um, otherwise, come and see me and I'll give you a hard copy of, of the checklist. Now, with this, this checklist, it takes you through step by step but I'm actually going to flick between the checklist and a sample folio that I've made up. And look, you can make yours like this if you want. You can make it on a video. You can make it um, using Prezi, whatever um, you prefer. Uh, any option is, is a valid option, um, but make it usable for you. And really a design process um, should be um, user-friendly. So starting with the first set of instructions here on the checklist, you're to do a title page, okay, um, which is for the project proposal. Now, what I've said to, to my class is that um, the title page is sometimes just a waste of paper, um, and I just prefer you to put the heading at the top of each page. That's fantastic. Um, but what you will need to do is have a title page for your folio. Uh, on that, I expect you to have design for living, which is the context area we're doing, model making, which is what... Um, we're actually making and our class, Year 7 Newman 2012, the teacher's name and your student name. That's the title page. You can put a picture on there if you want, but essentially that's enough for a good title page. Scrolling down, you can see I've gone down to my project proposal. So I've actually broken that up into the two headings, which are very important as part of the folio. And you'll see that if I go back here, this is the project proposal just here a design brief and design situation, and then a criteria for success. Now, given by your teacher, it says here, if you scroll down, they're both here. Okay, so that's on your checklist. They're already there. All you have to do is copy and paste them, and this Google site allows you to do that. Just select, control C, and then when you go over to your folio, control paste to put your design situation and design brief in. Then you'll see that there's an analysis criteria for success, which is the third part, of uh, the project proposal. Now, a criteria for success is ways in which you are going to create a successful product. That means how am I going to get the best possible marks? So, for example, the first one I've written there is design a model which is aesthetically pleasing, one that looks good, you know, one that functions, have it handed in by the due date, etc., etc., etc. This involves you thinking about the qualities and features that will ensure your project is successful by establishing a criteria for success. Pretty straightforward. Five to 10 points would be a, um, a valid contribution. Scrolling down to the next page takes us to our project management. Go back to the checklist, project management, title page. As I said, don't worry about a title page, just have the heading and then do what's instructed. Drop a time action plan for this task. For example, this is an example. This is what I've used in my folio. I've got a table and I've got week, what I did, and an evaluation of that. Now, in evaluation, we always use a PMI, which is a plus, minus, and interesting facts. And as you can see, I've written week one, I researched different models. They are existing designs. So I could even put that in if I wanted to, existing designs. And I've evaluated that I felt interested and determined to finish it. Always add because. Because why? We want to make this uh, an analytical response not just a, oh, I felt good. And we do that for each one. And as you can see, I've got a fair few there that I've created within a table. Done. Project management's done. So essentially, project management is about you thinking about what you would hope to be doing each lesson. Let's move down to the next section, which is research. Now, in research, I've got to do a mind map about what a model is. Then I'm going to do a collage. And then I'm going to look at materials and tools, and then I'll start my drawing techniques. So going to the mind map. I did my mind map a little like this. A model is, and I put a picture of one there that I've got off the internet, which is a set of skyscrapers essentially, or a building landscape. Um, but you can research all different ones for recreation, and these are this is the instructions that I put on your checklist. When you scroll down, my next page is my collage. 
which got a heap of different pictures there of different models. You can see this one here would be a model uh, for clothing. It um, may be a model for um, ergonomics the, of the human form. Um, and I've got lots of different models there. That takes me down to here. So I've done mind map, I've done create collage. Now I'm up to my materials. And this is about you thinking about what materials you intend to use for your product. And then obviously what tools. So go back to my research section. And as you can see, there's my, I didn't say that, but that's my heading, research, my title page. And then I'm just moving down. I'm up to materials. And I put it all in a table again. Tables are effective. They're a good way of creating uh, or conveying a message. So I've got name and material, description, use uh, in the model making. So for example, I'm, my first one is cardboard. A lot of you will use cardboard. Um, material is similar um, to uh, a thick, stiff paper that is made of pressed pulp, paper pulps. I've actually given a description of what it is. I'm going to use it to construct my walls and my buildings and a picture of it. Timber, paper, paints, glues, you might have more. Okay. Then I move down to tools. Name of the tool, picture of the tool, use in the model. Hot glue gun, most people will use that. A picture of the hot glue gun, what you're going to use it for. I'm going to use it to stick uh, for extra stickiness, okay, and and strength, okay. PVA will be just as effective, but this one, benefit is it's quick drying, okay. So then you'd have maybe... Um, on the other one up here where you've got glue, you'd put some of the reasons that, that that would take a little bit longer, but just as effective. Now, I know some of you are using glue to, um, as part of a water feature. You need to put that in there. If it's part, what, have you, what you've used it for, I want to see it in there. So I use it for a water feature. I use it to stick this down. I use it to the different things that you used it for. Scrolling down to the next page, we've got drawing techniques. Now, I'd like you, not to, I'd like you to leave a page for this, but I'd like you not to worry too much about this. This will be done in class. We're going to do this one on Google SketchUp, okay? And I'll have an instruction manual for you. You don't need to worry too much about that. I'll be taking you through that step by step. But I've got my page there because I'll be pasting in my two-point perspective drawing of that. That hasn't been covered yet. However, the next part has. We did um, concept development. We did sketches in our core unit, which was the first topic we covered this year. So if you've forget how to draw correctly, maybe go back to that or seek help from the teacher um, to help you with that. But basically, on our checklist, we're down to here now. We've done all of this and we're drawing techniques with two points, so don't worry about that. We're up to con concept development. My title page is the heading. Okay, and then this here, this information on point 11, I'll put here. So using your inspirations, sketch three possible designs possible design solutions. Each design must be A4 page, which is essentially what this page is here. Label each design sta stating the materials you are going to use, design features and inspirations. Now, this is the part that most people fail to do. If you're going to do a sketch, it needs to be annotated. So write on it. These are materials for here, here, here. This is a building it's made out of. This is the size of the building. Okay. Even if you wanted to, you get into details and put some scale in there, but that's not essential. Then you need to evaluate with a PMI table, three different points in each column. So positive, minus, and interesting. Things you like about it, things you maybe don't like, and things that you know are interesting that you may convey in your final design. Okay? It's not a difficult task, this part. What I would suggest you do is print out these pages and hand draw them in, okay? uh, and then make sure you annotate them using arrows and writing all around the page. The more annotation you get, the better marks you get. Okay, so what I would do is I would make three pages. Okay, I'd have my first design here, my second design here, my third design down there. Then I move to my final solution. So go back to my checklist. Let's go. So final solution. Here it is. Here information I've put there for you. Draw your coloured final design with top views. Fully label your design with materials that you are going to use. Write a paragraph explaining why you selected this as your final design. So again, this is like a PMI saying this is why I did it. We call it ongoing evaluation or formative evaluation. Draw your colored final design with top views. Okay, so all I'm asking you to do is like an aerial shot view of your final design. Label it. Tell me the materials you used. 
that you actually use to make it. Okay, going down to the next page, very easy. So it's just another sketch. All right, and it may for well be one of these sketches that you did in your concept development. It may be exactly the same, or it might be a combination of all three. But it shouldn't be something completely different. All right, otherwise you're not using your design folio effectively. And the, one of the last section here is production. This is a pretty easy part. You construct your design. We do that at school. Okay, outline the steps you followed in the construction of the model. This is it here. The date, what you did, and an evaluation. And don't forget to put because. All right? And add to it. Now, if you're smart about this, this should be very similar to those pr that previous project management page we did right up here at the top. If you're smart about it, you could copy and paste that down into your production page. Okay, it will be very similar because it's the same thing. It's saying what you did. There may be some variations and they'll need to be changed. And obviously you're gonna to have to add the date this time. So it's not that difficult to do. Scrolling down to the next page, that goes over two pages there. It's probably not the best thing. So I might just move that up. I'll have my final evaluation. Okay, now this is the last part of your folio. Folio evaluations refer to evaluation scaffold. Okay, I've written some questions here for you. The biggest mistake people make is they answer it as a, just a very simple answer, yes or no. I want you to explain. So is my project aesthetically pleasing? Yes, it looks good because. Always say because. Because why? I want to know why. If you don't write why, I'm going to be writing that on your folio. Why, 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 how, you know, where. I want to know, I want more explanation. Does my project function well? If you write yes, fantastic, but I don't know why it functions well. So tell me some of the reasons why it functions well. Tell me some of the reasons why it looks good. It may be simple because you did a really good paintwork on the outside. It may function well because it actually conveys the message of the model you were trying to construct. Simple as that. Does my project meet with my pre-established criteria for success? That was the thing that we did early on on page two. Yeah, where you actually said how you were going to be successful in the project. The other questions are fairly easy. How effectively did I work with the constraints of the design situation? And brief. That means, did I actually make a model? Does it look good? Okay. Does my project resolve the brief? Now those two questions, again, relate to this page up here, the design brief. Reread this and see whether yours actually meets that. Coming down to the question six, what changes or improvements could I make to the final project? So if you were to make it again, how could you make it better? And tell me why. Am I pleased with the results? Yes, tell me why. If I had more time to develop my design further, what would I do? You need to be specific in telling me what you would do differently. And what are the views of other people regarding my design? Please don't say no one said anything because I guarantee I've said something to you and I've said, you know, this is a great design. I always try and give you compliments, and I'm sure your other student, other peers would have complimented you. Okay, If they've given you ne negative feedback, fantastic, put it down. I mean, I don't think people should be giving negative feedback, but you know, they may say, oh, you could have done this, and in a way, they're actually giving you feedback. Um, and you might regard it as negative, but it's we, we learn from, um, from feedback. So put those all down, and if you wanted to, you can say, my teacher said, and then explain what, what, what I actually said. Now that's a pretty step-by-step -step, um, explanation of your folio. And as you can see, if you go back to your checklist, we're up to the last part there. There's not too much more than that. Good luck with it. Um, if you have any issues, email me and I'll, um, I'll respond uh, either in an email or in, during the next lesson.